Now I'm going to talk you through the activities within each phase of mitosis. So in the column, or the table rather, that I've built here, you see on the left-hand uh, column the phase, the name of each phase of mitosis, and then you see the activities in a, just a concise bullet list um, in the middle column, and then I'm going to draw an illustration of a cell in that phase in that third column. But before I do, I want to go ahead and um, remind you that prior to mitosis, you had interphase, correct? And one of the big things that happens in interphase is that the chromosomes are duplicated. So remember that occurred in the S phase. DNA synthesis or DNA replication is going to lead to a duplication of the chromosomes. So an unduplicated chromosome will look like this. But during the S phase, after we duplicate it, now it's going to have two sides to it, right? It's going to look like this. It's held together in the center. The center is called the centromere, where the two sides of that chromosome are held together. Each side of the chromosome is called, so this side right here, for example, this whole side, this whole side is called a sister chromatin. which is genetically identical to that sister chromatid. So the two chromatids are the two sides of a chromosome. Uh, the chromatids within the same chromosome are called sister chromatids, and they are genetically identical to one another. So that's how the chromosomes will exist once we get to prophase. Remember, there are um, 46 of those. And because that has, because each cell has 46 chromosomes, as I uh, mentioned that term to you earlier, or that concept to you earlier, it has 23 pairs, or, or 46 chromosomes, so it's referred to as a diploid cell. So I want to introduce that term to you here, um, the term diploid. So a diploid eukaryotic human cell is going to have 23 pairs of chromosomes, or again, 46 total. Okay. So now we're going to um, go ahead and look at each phase here. So beginning in with prophase, the activities that you see listed there, um, chromosomes are going to condense and become visible. So if I go ahead and begin my drawing here, I'm going to draw a single animal cell. And there's going to be a nucleus inside of here, right? And so the chromosomes are going to begin to condense. So what you're going to see if you're looking at these under a microscope, which I do have some pictures I've imported for you as well that we'll look at in a later slide, that the chromosomes start to get really thick and chunky like that. Okay. Um, the mitotic spindle begins to form. And so the mitotic spindle is a structure that consists of centrioles and microtubules. So here are some little centrioles. There's another pair of centrioles. And mitotic spindle begins to form, which is made of microtubules. And this is known as the mitotic spindle or spindle apparatus. And it's ultimately going to be involved in um, separating the sister chromatids uh, or pulling them apart from one another and, and pulling those opposite chromatids to opposite sides of the cell. Okay, But that's going to happen in anaphase, so we're not there yet. The third bullet point says the nuclear envelope breaks down. And so the nuclear envelope in here that I've drawn, I'm going to just, oops, oh, that's kind of big and chunky, erasing. Um, uh, there we go, that's a bit better. So that nuclear envelope is going to start to break down. It's going to disappear. The nucleolus disappears as well. And the centrosomes move to opposite sides of the cell, which I had already drawn them moving to the opposite side. Um, our centrosome is the region. Um, that contains those centrioles. Whoops, I'm still on eraser mode, sorry. There are centrosomes to opposite sides of the cell. Okay, so now we're going to look at metaphase. So from prophase, we go into metaphase. And what's going to happen is that the chromosomes are going to line up in the middle of the cell. So let me draw a cell again. Here we go. 
And so imagine that there's, you know, this would be the center right there. So the center of that cell is referred to as the metaphase plate. So that's just an imaginary dotted line I drew in there just so I could show you. That's the center. Um, it's called the metaphase plate, or you may have heard it called the equatorial line at some point. Um, but at any rate, what's going to happen is those chromosomes are going to now line up in the middle of the cell. Now I'm only going to have room to draw a couple of chromosomes, but remember all of them would be here. There we go. So that they line up in a way that the centromeres are going to line up on that metaphase plate so that you have a sister chromatid on one side of the plate and a sister chromatid on the other. They do still have that mitotic spindle attached to them. So these are microtubules now that I just drew. They're part of that spin spindle apparatus. Centrioles down here. Okay. Now, what's going to happen next is we're going to go into anaphase. So when we go into anaphase, the sister chromatids are pulled apart. They're pulled apart and they're going to be pulled towards the opposite sides of the cell. So here's my cell again. And what's going to happen is that one sister chromatid is going to go one way and the other sister chromatid is going to go the other way. Same thing with the little red one down below. One sister chromatid goes one way, one sister chromatid goes the other way. So they're being pulled and they're being pulled by that spindle apparatus. Being pulled to the opposite sides of the cell because now what we're going to do is we're going to divide the cell. Right, So we're going to divide the cell down the middle, but that's going to happen um, at, at some point during telophase. Uh, sometimes, some people will say it, it, that, that cytokinesis sometimes you know, can begin towards the end of anaphase, and then as we begin telophase, it's not necessarily um, terribly important. Um, it, exactly when it starts, but it does be, it begins, the cytokinesis begins towards the very end of mitosis. So let's go to telophase. And I'm going to go ahead and I want to um, read the bulleted list for you before I draw this picture. So the bulleted list that you see in terms of activities in telophase is that the chromosomes now are going to unwind and decondense. So chroma those chromosomes are going to go back to being that thready, stringy chromatin that we talked about earlier. The nuclear envelope is going to reform. The nucleolus will reappear. The mitotic spindle will break down. And cytokinesis will begin. So what we're doing in telophase is we're basically undoing everything that happened in prophase. So it's really a lot just like the opposite of prophase. So drawing my, my cell here, again, the uh, nuclear envelope is going to reform. Now, instead of having one nucleus, though, because we're dividing the cell, we're going to have two. So I'm going to draw a nuclear envelope here and a nuclear envelope here. You've got a black chromosome in this one, and you have a red chromosome in this one, right? But they're decondensing, so they're not going to still be in that chunky chromosome form, but I just wanted you to see them here. So over here, same thing, a black one and a red one, right? There we go. The nucleolus is going to reappear. I really don't have room to draw it in there, so I'm not going to. Uh, the mitotic spindle is going to break down. And then, again, cytokinesis is going to take place. So cytokinesis is a division of the cytoplasm. And so what will happen is the cell will begin to pinch in like this on either side. Pinch in over here. This pinching in structure that I'm drawing is called a cleavage furrow. And I have a picture of it on, an, on the next or in a later slide, so I'll show it to you again. But the, that cleavage furrow just continues to pinch in and continues to pinch in and continues until ultimately we've completely separated that original cell and now we have two cells. So we have this cell, right, and we have this cell. So we have two new cells that originated as one parent cell, right? So we had one diploid cell at the beginning of this at the end, we have two diploid cells. Okay, those two end cells can be called daughter cells. 
They are genetically identical to one another, and I wanted to, that's why I wanted to show you and wanted to go ahead and draw those chromosomes in there. So you see how cell number one has one black chromosome and one red chromosome? And cell number two has one black chromosome and one red chromosome. They are genetically identical to one another, and that's very important. And they're genetically just like our original parent cell. So mitosis is the kind of process that our body will perform when we're growing. So when we are growing and we need to build more cells, they, they, we grow them through the process of mitosis. If you are injured and you need to repair tissue, you've had tissue damage from an injury, uh, that tissue is repaired through mitosis. Sometimes cells are just old and worn out and need to be replaced, and we replace them through mitosis. So those are the kind of situations that the body will perform mitosis within. So you do want those cells to be genetically identical to one another. Um, you don't want to have um, a change in the genetics because if you, that occurs, then you have a mutation. And then you can be on your road towards that cell developing into a cancer cell. So that's the importance of mitosis.